All right, hello, wine drinking people. Today is June 7th, and uh, you can see I've had a lot to drink here this last week here. A lot of stuff coming out today, but uh, this is how we're going to do it for at least a short period of time, sending you out one little blurb on each and everything we do here just so we can get, you know, appropriate coverage for these great estates like Domain Trimbach. And we just had a tasting with Domain Weinbach. This estate has a similar style, definitely more on the dry style, not like Domain Zinombrick, another famous estate that happens to be very, you know, rich and more on the sweet side of wines from Alsace. But even though these wines do have residual sugar in them, because of their northern latitude, they have incredible bracing acidity that balances it out. But you definitely notice that richness on the palate may be something that people don't like about these wines. But I find them to be fascinating and, you know, definitely need a little time after they're released. And uh, we had some older vintage wines that were incredible values. And this tasting from uh, one of the most famous properties, one of the large producers in Alsace, uh, they cover 35% of the market share in the United States of America. Wow, and the history goes back to the 17th century, so they've had a lot of time to market and sell these wines. We had an amazing deal on the SGNs, the most rarest of all of the dessert wines in the world, um, several months ago. People sold out in one day. Well, these wines also incredible values. I mean, when you look at, even though they are large production, they're very good in quality, and uh, the pricing here... Most of these wines are under $20. They're entry-level wines, which there is a couple different categories. You have the reserve wines, which are domain wines, and then you have the other wines, which uh, they do you know, purchase fruit for these as well. So we started out with the Pinot Blanc, and this wine is, um, uh, well, Pinot Auxerre is also allowed in the blend, which is uh, considered another version of Pinot Blanc, and uh, similar but a little bit different in taste. I don't know if this one has any of that in it, but that was just something that uh, was pointed out to me. I don't know if that's the only blending they're allowed to do in Alsace, other than with their entry-level cuvées. Light pear and apple-like fruit on the nose, with a touch of whetstone, and a nice dry style of Pinot Lunk, a good, de good deal of tree fruit and freshness, some tangerine citrus showing up on the finish. Uh, very good, nicely balanced Pinot Blanc. All right, 2005 Pinot Gris Reserve. Uh, also known as Pinot Grigio, the same varietal. The reserve distinguishes the domain fruit, and uh, this comes from the uh, Hagenau domain that the uh, domain Trimbach owns. A uh, slight slate nuance to the peach and apple-like fruit, lemon, lime, citrus also showing. A nice richness on the palate, uh, along with a little on the drier side, uh, still with a nice balance of freshness and ripe tree fruit showing, and some nice minerality at the end, some light chalky notes through the finish. Very good stuff. Uh, 2005, um, definitely a few vintages old, starting to notice that bottle age there. The 2008 Trimbach Riesling, uh, this is, uh, this is again, one of their portfolio that they purchased fruit for. Uh, light petrol nuance to the peach and orange-like citrus on the nose. A hint of wet stone-like minerality there. A bit of a tonic-like uh, approach on the palate with a slight spritz to the finish. Uh, very good stuff. And then uh, the killer stuff, the Reserve Cuvée Frederick Emil. Uh, this is the wine we have here in the store at the moment from Trimbach. And uh, 2002, so almost got 10 years of bottle age on this. And a pretty reasonable price for something that's been cellared for you here at $45. Uh, this is a single vineyard, and it's Ostenburg and Geisburg. So if they used either one of those designations... Uh, they could call it Grand Cru. Kind of interesting that they won't allow them to call it Grand Cru because it contains both of them. So both Grand Cru, but together, can't be blended as Grand Cru, and this estate happens to lie in both. Uh, but it has been around since before the Grand Cru system. It really doesn't make any sense. But uh, anyways, um, <clears throat> a very intense wine on the palate and the bouquet. Slight musty, kind of earthy component showing the age there. Peach and apricot fruit, a limestone-like minerality. Some of that petrol coming out out there as well, but lovely lemon drop candy kind of citrus fruit. Very intense on the palate with layers of that candied lemon drop citrus and a lovely minerality showing that petrol and slaty notes. Uh, really long and wow, what a wonderful wine. The Gewürztraminer oh, kind of brings you down a step from there, but you got to go do Gewürztraminer at the end here. The, the wines definitely have a perfuminess and a uh, sweetness that overwhelms the palate. This peach and lychee nut fruit, uh, really nice on the nose with some pretty floral hibiscus and white pepper notes there as well. A really pretty wine, uh, a drier approach Again, that's the house style uh, than most Gewürztraminer. A nice balance of that perfume and spice on the finish. A really good little um, 
balance converged her meter. And then uh, the 2004 Cuvée de Senor de Ripipuro, and uh, this is uh, Osterberg right behind the winery. The name refers to the lords of uh, Ripipuro Pierre, and this was the land they owned, and um, the ruins of the castle still actually lay lie on the on the on the vineyard site today on the property. So um, vineyard the estate goes back to 1626. Wow, amazing the history this family has in Alsace of producing wine. And this wine has a wonderful complex, complex bouquet of lavender, floral, lychee nuts, white peach fruits, and a hint of that white peppery spice as well. Really rich on the palate with a good deal of that plump white peach fruit and lychee nuts and lavender floral notes showing through the finish. Excellent Gewürztraminer. That's what I had to drink with the folks from Domain Trimbach. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember... Always drink the good stuff first.